But mm. I ha was having high expectations. They seem to be taking things really great. Going like again? Key. Yeah. Galio, Camille, Fiora, goodbye. All of you are out of the game. Exactly the same draft, so that would likely be Gragas Oriana to come through here on the next rotation. Um, which, I mean, I, I'm not surprised to see it. I, I think that from game one side, they're like, well, we, we just need to shore up our early game a little bit, and then we can we know we can come back anyway in the late game. They're actually going to over-prioritize mm -hmm. the Darius. I kind of like this because this leaves Rix now finding a, a matchup into that Darius top lane. Uh, it was game one picking Darius in their third position, they can assume that the Orianna will still be available in third position right now because Rick's unlikely to pick Ori uh, here when it comes yeah. to already having six. I agree with you in this one. However, do we want to see the same draft as in the previous game? I, I, I don't. I mean, well, we're, okay, 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 okay. We're changing things a little bit. No, we're not. I mean, fresh again. <sighs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't think we'll get the same draft because I think we'll see a Vayne ban. Now that we know that that the that, that Rick's play it, I think for Game Lord, they'll be breathing a sigh of relief that, okay, the Vayne didn't destroy us because Rick's made some mistakes. So, yeah, we're going to see okay. uh, pretty much the same draft. And I, I think from Rick's perspective, it makes sense. And from Game Lord's perspective, it also makes sense. I think now we see the Orianna and Game Lord ban Vayne, and we see where we go next. Darvan, no Yavan in this game, right? Please. Can Possibly we, not, can, no. Can we not get Darvan, please? Can we get anything else? Literally anything else with Javan. I'll take a team with Jungle for Javan again. Thank you. Um, well, Oriana, uh, yeah, as you predicted, making it full game load once again. Seems like we might have the same draft as in the last game, but at least yeah. for them. But, okay, there's no need to panic right now, you know, because we have some bands to go through. Here's the Jags. Okay. Yep. And, and then has I, I think ban, four, ban 5 is going to be vain, potentially, at least. It did undo them. Rick's going to okay. hold their, their mm -hmm. fourth ban as well with the Zed. I think Rick's last ban was the Alistair away from Hester, so we'll see what Game Lord do. Oh, Game Lord actually stick with the, the Riven ban. We might actually be running the entire draft back, uh, which is not the first time it happens, but it's rare and always fun uh, when we see it. Oh, uh, I did for what? For what? Like... Should we just play the BOD the bird uh, again while you and Alexander were casting just to see how these guys? No, I want to see what happens in this guys. game. We want to see what changes. The Nami's oh. here as well, so the swap up. We know that means that, that Zefta is likely still on the Gragas. There's the opportunity for Ruiz to be taking it. But what that does is that doesn't reveal the Garen mid lane that it was last time. So now the Vayne is a lot less secure of a, a choice. You don't know the matchup that you're running into. So that puts Rix in a position. Do you take a jungle matchup? Do you look for something like a Kha'Zix, or do you go still for the Javan? Please. Do you opt towards the Nunu that we've had no, 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 before? No, do you no, go no, for Lee no, Sin? There's a lot of picks still available. No, it's going to be Kha'Zix. I, okay, so they're going to go for extra damage. SC7 is going to look to carry a little bit more. We do have one change so far on the eighth pick of a draft. Finally, and this one actually, I like it. In the last game, we saw Gragas versus Javan. They didn't walk out so well. I don't know if it was because of the champion or, or because, uh, as I saw the and the flags are not landing them properly. But you know what? We've got Kha'Zix, and we're going to complete this roster with Ari. Finally, give me something different. Give me a Nasa team here in the mid lane. Give me an Enchanter that will be able to deal all the damage, all that burst as well in the early minutes of the game. I'm really excited to see it because now you were talking about it. You've got the Garret. You didn't know what you were going to be facing, but I think Ari can be, can be quite convinced to get this champion. Yeah, so Game Lord running exactly the same draft back. Yeah. Um, not too surprised to see it, as, as I don't think the Ari offers the same kind of, um, you know, resist uh, ability to eat through uh, the front line like a Darius and a Garen oh. and, a, and a Gragas. I think Ari definitely struggles there. What this will do is if Rix can get Snitch and SC7 on this Kha'Zix and this Ari to work together well with Clue, and, and get single picks, they can yeah. easily eat through one target at a time. I think the, the difficulty comes, though, is actually tidying up an ending fight. So Kha'Zix is going to be have to be the one that kind of carries a lot of the end of these fights, whereas that was Snitch in the last game. Um, so interesting, interesting different draft. Um, I, I, I kind of feel like even though last game... For Rix, you really, really want to win this one because we don't know what the mental is like for them exactly. We know 
how some players might take things. But again, this is going to play an important role in here. And we've already started with some action here. As I seven being attacked, being seen as well. The jungle mm -hmm. already having quite a good vision from Gaylord from the very beginning. And I think you got to do this as we see the fan vote come through, Game Lord. The uh, most favored for now, which is a little bit of a surprise, but obviously after that game one, I think this is what you have to do against the uh, Kazakh in the jungle when you're playing uh, Gragas. Is like you don't want to take the fight if you're Gragas. You would like no. to just farm up past level five, get your ultimate, and uh, avoid basically fighting against a uh, target when you're isolated. Kazakhs will eat through you then. Whereas I'd like to see SE7 trying to find Sefta in the jungle. Um, I think that's when you can have a little bit of impact because once Gragas has his ultimate and has a couple of items, he's really hard to actually make the kill stick on if he has anybody around him. I think that's a very interesting topic that definitely should be coming up more in these next few games. Like what um, different junglers can do, what they are specializing in, as they were saying. But before that, Gank attempt from here. Zefta to the top lane. Random is already low. This time Haymaker does land. He hasn't put the damage down <gasps> on two Lonely Kid. He was ticking, but it's not quite enough. First Blood goes over once again to Game Lord. Yeah, and the pity is that SA7 was quite close right here doing the Scalacraft in the upside, um, in the upper side of the river. But he wasn't close enough in order to help his teammates. And this is going to already be putting Game Lord in a little bit of a gold advantage. And not only that, but he's also giving them kind of the prior when it comes to the next objective in that lane. So we'll see how that works out once again. But for now, you can see how they're facing each other here in the mid lane, not leading anywhere. Spain, a little, a little bit of a Spain, you know, like it's always good. Spain, Spain. I feel like I feel like Lonely Kid is a bit of a blind spot for Random. Like this is two mm -hmm. games in a row where Random has died early game. Once off a play that, that Ricks were making oh. game one, as the Echo Prison does land in bottom lane, this shouldn't result in a kill. Clue has his summoners available. But this game was Random kind of getting baited in. It looked like he was looking for the kill onto Lonely Kid, but this Darius has barrier. Like the ignite is not enough to eat through for random and, and it just feels very odd that random is uh you know in, in these situations where he's dying early game everybody says random is the best top laner in the league and i think lonely kid is showing up huge Wait. in this series uh, and really starting to to fight for that title do people say that people really oh, oh there we go the mega fan of uh, do people really say that random is best player 100 percent uh coming into this uh season everybody's oh, tier list was like random is on a different level to every top laner he was like in uh, a class of his own that most people uh players and also some of our other co-casters were like random is absolutely the guy to beat in top lane and and will dominate everybody but lonely kid has over time i think really started to challenge that this time he's gonna have to play around it though barrier oh. not quite available yet does get suplex back it's gonna be a tough ask for him to get out of that tries to use decimate to get out barrier not quite there surely one second away for lonely kid it's ricks and random picking up a kill in the top lane to try and even up that top lane score I'm really interested in how this is going to play out, like because they've got Set and Fresh in the same team. And that means that you are going to have a quite, quite interesting uh, combo right there with the Flay, the Haymaker. So I, I just want to know how this will work out once they get together more time. But for now, what we're seeing right now is that the objectives are going to be spawning in quite a few seconds. Seems like Game Lord is kind of having their eyes on the Herald, you know, kind of getting a little bit of vision around the area which is something again very important guys don't forget to ward in your games this is gonna win you the literal game so take note of that but both teams seem to be focusing more on this first dragon which of course is useful but cause lead to a potential team fight that might not be so positive for Rex right now so let's see if they do try to push for it because for now the dragon is going down in game lord's favor yeah, Rix have got Snitch collapsing on the bottom side, but I don't think that they can get there in time. 1400 on it, throws the Mega Inferno Bomb out to try and close the gap. It's the Game Lord jungle has smote it down. That's going to be a kill going on to Clue, and Rix don't really find what they were looking for from that exchange. Dragon goes over to Game Lord. Yeah, indeed, as I was saying, I didn't think that teamfight will work so well. The hook from Thresh didn't arrive quite in time. Uh, well, it was miss, a missed hook if we are to talk about it. And yeah, this gives them the pressure in the board lane here. But Lonely Kid also has quite a good advantage to defend the tower right now. He's in a position, in a place right now in the game where he's able to do this one versus once without much trouble. As we also talked in the preview, Ari isn't able to melt champions away like Vayne kind of does. So again, 
you're not worried if you're a lonely kid right now. You're not worried if you're a redemption. You're not worried if you're a ruse. And Sefta is doing quite well as well. So I think it'll all turn down kind of into this cautionary tale where teams will try to keep away from each other a little bit. In Rex's idea's case, of course, you want to keep on picking, t picking killers here and there. But it seems like they've identified how difficult it is going to be for them to break through hmm. the front line of Game Lord. Yeah, I mean, Snitch's one job in this game is to flank and try and get a charm onto Redemption and, and take him out of the team fight before he can ever really do much. All of the other targets are not particularly as useful. Like, even taking Hesta out, it can be done by Anari, but obviously, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit less impactful than you would like. Whereas if Snitch can trade himself for Redemption, they still have Doom as that, that, that carry to, to eat through people, I think. It's a tough one because I think SC7 is the one that has to kind of find the isolated targets, look at kills. But Lonely Kid, I think if he even gets a couple of items, it's going to be really tough to stop in this game. Like it's hard to, to eat through that Darius who's healing up throughout that, that fight. Rift Herald will get started up for a moment by Game Lord, but now they drift back to the middle lane as uh, both teams are kind of stalled out. Nobody committing to this Rift Herald yet after that first dragon taken. Oh. This is probably the, the longest time that we've had between a Dragon and a Rift Herald take all season long. I feel like normally we bounce from one objective directly to the other, and it has not happened in this game around, as Game Lord are the ones on the objective. That one hits three. There's the oh. charm going to land onto Hester, and the flay is enough to set a doom for the first kill for Rix, but Rix now trying to get away from the situation. Won't be enough to get Clue out as Rift Herald down to 300 health. As Lonely Kid oh. is going to get caught as that Rift Herald resets, bounces all the way back up in health, and it's Zephter once again on this Gragas, having exactly the impact they need. That's a great charm onto Ruiz, but it's not quite enough. <gasps> Snitch gets oh. flashed on by Zephter, and he is monstrous in this series. Game Lord back themselves away. They got the Rift Herald they got a bunch of kills as well. I think the viral role did a quite good job in that, even though Thepta, Thepta had to flash away. But again, if we look at the steam fight once again, the charm I think was the detonating factor, the making find the bomb to keep the enemies at bay. And if you look at the upper zone, you can also look at Darius right there with the haymaker on to Lonely Kid, leaving him quite low on life, allowing him allowing his team to get the kill quite easily. Random has to flash away and this is all just leading to them having to stop kind of team fight. And when they try to approach again, you can see it very clearly how they have to just go away. Otherwise, they are within Ari's range. That's something that you really want to want to do. Looks like I was going to say Rift Herald was used, but it was not. Is uh, Zephyr uh -oh. still has it in his inventory? That's Tower First Blood going down on the bottom lane. I believe it was First Tower going over to Game Lord in the way that the uh, indicators propped up, but that was the tiniest of margins that Rick's lost out on that one. Apprehend doesn't connect for Lonely Kid. That'll back them away from the tower, and we're right into a Dragon Spawn setup as Redemption has been found in the middle lane. There's the Mega Inferno Bomb Ooh. right before the objective. That's huge, but it was traded for the Flash of Redemption, and that's an even bigger cooldown going into a fight. You totally. So, again, this is really important. Rose is not having his ultimate up right now, but from Rix's side, not C S A seven, not Snitch, not Doom. They didn't have their ultimates up for this team fight that is going Ooh. on right now. Tidal wave into the flay though as Ruiz was pulled back in. Go Game Lord is taking the dragon on the bottom side and redemption without that flash is gonna get taken out. Big suplex is gonna wow. deal damage to Game Lord, but they're able to convert the kills in their favor. It's stolen away by Zephter. As SC7 seven? and Zephter were, were having a smite fight against the dragon on the bottom side here. SC7 <gasps> drops incredibly low, but Game Lord, they know they've already got the objective. They can already back themselves out and reset from this fight. Game Lord a much better early game than in game one. But the pity here is that Redemption didn't get to use his ultimate. So, I mean, is this all bad for when he responds, which is right now? And Game Lord is in a position where they can chase right now to get the <laughs> kill onto SA7 if they want to. But again, they didn't have the ultimates just now. So they're in a kind of vulnerable position in comparison. And there goes a Herald uh, stress. Yeah, Herald gonna get cracked in the middle lane to try and break through this Ziggs. If they uh, can use that Mega Inferno Bomb, it is available. Surprisingly, really short cooldown on this. He's trying to get close enough so that the cast time is low enough it can't be flashed. It's one of those oh. ones that because it has a travel time, there's a sweet spot with being close enough for it to arrive without being uh, telegraphed. The flash in from Ruiz, he's gonna go for it, gets the ultimate off, but it doesn't pick up the kill. There's a shield coming through. The turret does finally go down. This lonely kid doesn't get the execute <gasps> reset no. on this, and actually he's gonna get dropped as he's moving through. But two members of Rick's already dead. They have traded it for Lonely Kid, but with that tower going down, Rick's are on the back foot. 
Ooh, interesting what we saw right now. Like this play was really cool. In, starting with a tidal wave by them, you can see the box up that from Rick size trying to, you know, Kate, as the name says, the enemy team for Game Lord has to not been able to get close enough. And also, Smith having to run away. This is complicating the tasks for Rick's. GG. The Aqua Prison doesn't quite land. It's a little bit of a squirmish for both of them. They don't get this many kills. It's not as effective. Both teams have to retreat really low on life. And I don't know about your stress, but I'm seeing, again, as you said, I'm liking what Game Lord's doing in this early mid game, but I want to see more. Like, if you want to win the game, you need you need to do more in order to win it. Because right well, now it's a like push and pull. I think Game Lord have got a really good composition for fighting the, the, the later this game goes. We saw them turn around game one, and that was against a better scaling team that had a lead. This is the kind of momentum in my mind that Game Lord are really ramping up for a game two win to put Rick's on, uh, you know, on match point here. Like Game Lord, this comp has has a great strength in these fights and the way that they're being taken. 4,000 health still on the Rift Herald as Rick's are trying to close in. Snitch doesn't really have a flank position as Clue flash play into it as he actually used the Protobel to start it. zephyr has got the Rift Herald and they can't quite get the first kill of this as SC7 had to back away. Big suplex maybe what Random Whoa. needed. The Haymaker is going to eat through Game Lord. Shockwave is going to catch Doom <gasps> out and Doom now Damn. in trouble. Doesn't oh, have his flash available but it's Snitch on the sidelines. Puts damage down, SC7 has healed up. Looks like he got the honey fruit from the top. Charm lands, oh! and now SC7, he misses the leap. He doesn't have the vision he needs to clean up this fight. And Hester and Lonely Kid just need to not be isolated. They can't allow SC7 to take them out individually, but Snitch is there. Charm isn't going to land. That's going to be the end of this fight, surely. As Game Lord, they got Rift Herald, but it was a back and forth fight. Game Lord lost three members in there. I think if there's something to be said about this team fight and to highlight, it's how SA7 is constantly uh, putting, like the one complicating the life for Game Lord. Like you can see them right now. He's gonna go in in a second. He will go. The team fight starts. He stays a little bit in the back lines. You know, he cannot go quite in. He flashes away, and then this just makes things difficult for Game Lord because there goes random again with the ultimate, and you can see how this is just snowballs in Rix's favor. Kalu here doing a quite good job by dragging the enemy away and there you go se 7 once again back in the rift willing to pick kills if necessary so i <laughs> think this is gonna be making this life very difficult Again. Yeah, and SC7 just healed up. He didn't even take the honey fruit snitch. He's going to land a charm. Go hold Zefta in place and remove the Whoa. jungle from this as Doom's Mega Inferno Bomb completes. But look at what they've traded for it. There's so much damage coming out from Game Lord that even without their jungler, they will be in a position to contest this dragon. Random gets taken out by Lonely Kid's execution. And SC7 had to recall. He can't get into this fight. It would be a one way trip as uh, he could have been the one with Smite. Aqua Prison oh. lands over the wall and it's everything Game Lord need. They take a third dragon of the game and now we'll turn towards the rest of the Rift. Do they go for Baron here? It's 10 seconds on Zephter as uh, Doom is the one that just died. Still 25 seconds left. Exactly. I think they've got time to do it. SA7, as you said, is the only one roaming around as well as Fresh. Oh, oh there Ruiz we go. Him. All he needs to do is put damage onto SC7 and force him back. And that'll at least open a window. Hester's here. Ooh. Hides so that SC7 comes around the corner and uh, Game Lord, they're pushing bot lane in the meantime. Snitch lands a charm, will pick up the kill. A little bit sloppy from Game Lord overall, but yeah. it's peeling Rex across the map. I didn't quite like this play, I have to say. I felt like, as you said, it was a little bit unfulfilling here. But you can see how Lonely Kid, for example, right now is in the lower side jungle, perhaps playing something for the neck, for the Elder, Infernal Elder, which I think is going to be, like, you know, really valuable by by teams. But in the meantime, you know, it's all about this middling tower. It's all about getting whatever you can do here with this Herald going on as well. You know, this Herald is not going to be able to do much, but it's as it's, it's going to be distracting Rick's for a little bit, a little teeny tiny bit in order for Game Lord to flank Rick's and be able to do something onto them. I think it was just about to expire on the timing yeah, by the looks of it and they well, just had to drop it down as uh, Game Lord can't get anything stress. from it as uh, they're going to try and push down mid at least a little to try and get vision control. Random and Clue uh, uh, stuck with 
members of game mode around them, but you can always use those bombs from Doom to just poke and prod around the jungle, see who's there. Snitch has pushed that bottom wave, and that's going to push towards the lower inner tower. Snitch forces the flash out from Redemption, and we saw what happened in the last fight, that Redemption didn't have his safety available. Oh. Sefta gets hooked, but it's not going to be anything more than that. Is uh, it's quite hard for the Ziggs to eat through Ocean Drake and Mountain Drake, and then the Locket as well on top of it. This is good ward out from Rix. Like, this ward by the wall yeah. generally hasn't been swept so much by Game Ward, and it's allowing uh, Rix to just know that they haven't started the Baron yet. Yeah, it's a really good one. I also want to touch upon a little bit of anatomization, how we start to see the Sturax, at least in the hands of, uh, I think it was as a seven with a shield and a heal. It's going to be quite useful. And if he wasn't healing enough, that would go another another um, healing item there for him. Forza got um, quite a few Ludens Tempest with the a AH ability haste and AP that it provides. You can bet that the magic penetration in this game and the items against it are going to be just flying all across the rift. But what I'm interested in seeing right now as well is a little bit on how they're going to take it because the objective is on the rift. They don't want to risk it just now. Game Lord is prepared for not to fight. Lord Charm has landed on Teloni Kid. A little damage up front, and most of the aggression is going towards the tower right now. Rick's got a few hundred damage down on it, but that's what they're trying to break. It's rare for you to see a game where a Ziggs has lost his mid tower and hasn't secured the enemy tower at the same time. That's oh. now for him going on to SC7, but Lonely Kid actually is the one to lose a lot of the damage onto his health and Game Lord. They, they, they've done a good job of defending mid tower. Uh, that's the mega inferno bomb from <gasps> Doom. Uh, oh. That's just a, a cr terrible situation for Game Lord to uh, for Rix to be in. Rix have just chosen to fight now. They hit nobody with that mega inferno bomb, and Game Lord looks like they want to try and capitalize from it as Rumi is uh. desperate to get into the fight, losing damage on the back end. And this has been somewhat well played on the second half of the fight from Rix. If they can continue to get the health bars lower and lower, maybe they can force Game Lord into a position where they can't take an objective bouncing comes through. I wonder whether that was a misclick from Doom because that, that Mega Inferno Bomb was just thrown out with nothing. Were they just trying to check the bush or something? He can I do that with a Bouncing Bomb. Maybe. I don't know. I was quite surprised as well. Another thing that I'm realizing right now is that from Game Lord, also something that is making their lives really difficult is how for Darius, you have to be close up. For Ruth, it's the same. And that's what's causing him to even Despite him being a frontliner, he's having to absorb so much damage. In the end, he lasts for about two seconds being alive in the rift, and then he dies. Then you've got Redemption, who might be the only one who's able to fight from afar, because for the brothers, Oops. okay, can't do this. This isn't going Can fast you? enough, and there's the explosive cask. SC7 gets blasted into oblivion, and 50 seconds on his death timer means that surely, surely that's Game Lord taking the Elder Drake. They're going to peel off for a moment, 6,000 health on it, no smite available for Rix. And now, <gasps> can they get the fight oh. to go? Perfect tidal wave is going to deny Clue the entry into the fight. Set with a Mega Inferno bomb that's gone out early. The dragon is not low enough to be stolen as they're trying to get it. Who is it that gets it? It's actually Redemption that gets the confirm on the dragon double oh, kill random. for Lonely Kid. It is all Game Lord all the way through this game. 6,000 gold in the lead with the Elder Dragon. That's a four Dragon Elder total. And they are going to be able to push through for a few more towers before that they can look to take Baron and maybe end this game. Random being the only one alive right now for Rick.g. That point here ready for Game Lord to end the game they potentially. They might just end here, actually. Yeah. Like, SC7 is the only one coming up. It's still 20 seconds left as uh, Random is the only member of Rick's. We'll see whether he can do anything. Suplex his lonely kid back away from the beginning of this one. And SC7, Rick? they can't put damage down onto Ruiz. Ruiz is going to try and end this one. As SC7 drops as fast as he respawns. And that's it. We're going to go Game 3, Match Point, Game Lord. 2-0 up off the same draft back to back. I can't believe this. What? Okay, so we were all betting on Gimlaw to win this series, but right now 